Hello everyone, this is Dr. Pritpal Singh, an MBBS and MD from CMC Ludhiana. And today I'm going to talk about medical ethics. Now medical ethics as such holds its value because we in our day-to-day -day practice, we tend to uh, see patients, we tend to look into the patients and some of, some of us are involved in clinical trials and practice so all nonetheless medical ethics does hold a very important part and we should know about the various pillars of medical ethics so that we can have an ethical justification of our behavior while treating patients so uh, before we start with medical ethics it is always uh, better to have an understanding between the difference between ethics and medical ethics. So ethics as such is the standard of behavior that tells us how human beings ought to act in many situations in which they find, self, find themselves. They could be as friends, as parents, as children, as citizens, as business people, and so on, or any other area. Whereas when we talk about ethics in medical, as medical ethics, this is a system of moral principles that applies to the values and judgments to the practice of medicine. And this helps the doctor to decide whether he is morally right or not. Out here, we are talking about a standard of behavior that we have in many situations, and in medical ethical ethics, we have to be we have to be morally sound. So, why do we think? Why is it necessary to have uh, ethics in med medicine? Because first of all, we are dealing with the life of patients, and when we are talking about the life of patients, there is there always comes a power, and that power is the power to cure. With this, although it's an advantage, but there, at the other aspect, we have the power to kill also where a lot of adverse effects or adverse drug reactions have been implicated as one of the leading causes of uh, mortality. We have to ensure the highest care to the community, community and we need to prevent doctors abusing trust and power. So before medical ethics, we have a lot of statements that are there. And these statements uh, are the Nuremberg Code. What this was, I'll be talking about this. We have the Declaration of uh, Geneva, which was modified last in 2006. Six, six. Then we have the Medical World Medical Association International Code of Medical Ethics, the AME revision, the Declaration of Helsinki that is modified in 2000, the Belmont Report, and the revision of AMA, which was done in 2001. So where does med medical ethics stand today? So this, we start with the Hippocratic Oath, which was modernized in 1948 and was named the Declaration of Geneva, which was further amended in Sydney in 1968 and Stockholm in 1994. And this provides the International Code of Medical Ethics. And this describes the medical ethics in terms of duties of physician in general, duty of physician to the patient, and duty of physician to the colleagues. So how why is so why is medical ethics so important when we talk about medical ethics ethics it goes back to the World War II where it was said that the Nazi physician performed brutal medical experiments upon helpless concentration camp inmates the persons were forced to uh, to become subjects in very dangerous studies against their will nearly all subjects endured incredible suffering mutilation and indescribable pain and this experiment often were deliberately designed to terminate in fatal outcome for the victims. Then we have certain other experiments that were there. One was sulfonylide experiment where wartime wounds were recreated and inflicted on healthy Jews designated to be treated with a new drug. High altitude experiments where uh, dissecting several parts of the brain while they were still alive. The tuberculosis experiment, the freezing experiment, the seawater experiment. A lot of these uh, studies have come up and then we have the rules or guidelines laid. The regulatory authorities came into uh, picture and they laid down the guidelines of how we should behave, what is our moral duty. Then 
the latest one is uh, the syphilis trial this uh, was done uh, we had a movie on this movie is based upon the research when which recruited 412 people with disease and feigned long term treatment it was done to find the overall effect of disease and how black reacted to it the story is told from the viewpoint of the nurse eunice avers who was well aware of the lack of treatment offered so there are based upon all these guidelines whether we talk about the declaration of geneva the declaration of helsinki the nuremberg code the belmont report the hippocratic oath which was later modified so there are four basic principles on which medical ethics rest that is autonomy beneficence non maleficence and justice and today we'll be talking about all these four of them so first we start with autonomy what is an autonomy autonomy is the ability of the person to make or exercise a self determining choices that means that the person he should be free to choose and entitled to act on their preferences provided their decisions and actions do not violate or impinge on the significant moral interest of others let's have some examples when you have an opinion that patient needs surgery but the patient refuses and uh, if the patient refuses then you have to accept it you have to his autonomy has to be expected so the right of auto autonomy is self determination which underpins the medical legal in understanding of informed consent and i have already talked about informed consent in a one of my previous sessions there are certain uh, things that go against the principle of autonomy like we treat the patient uh, without their consent treating the patient treating the patient treating the patient without giving any all relevant information necessary for making an informed and intelligent choice that is an informed consent that assumes a vital role telling patient white lies withholding information uh, from patient when they have uh, when they have expressed reflective choice to receive it forcing information on patient when they have expressed a reflective choice not to receive it forcing anyone to act against their reasoned moral judgment and or conscience the next one is non maleficence which says do no harm so that means that the rule says you should not do any harm to anyone and yeah, this is our stringent duty that we should not injure others let's have some common examples of this now you have a terminal patient you have a patient who is terminally and you feel you can no longer offer him anything that could cure him he heard him that the taking of arsenic uh, may cure him and asked you to give him arsenic arsenic is a poison what do you do in this situation obviously the uh, the second principle do no harm comes into action let's have some uh, some uh, principles that are against the non maleficence you sway off the leg of a person which is intact you operate on someone who did not have app appendicitis you puncture the heart while heart while doing a bone marrow aspiration these are some things that come under non maleficence then the next one is beneficence that is do good give the provision of benefits preventing and removing harm so if an act does not bestow benefit or fails to address an imbalance of harm over benefit that could rightly be condemned so that means you have to always go for a risk benefit assessment and if the benefits far outweigh the risk then only you go ahead with the treatment otherwise you do not go ahead with the treatment coming with some examples a patient cuts his finger on a machine and he had a loss of lot of blood you gave him a matched blood transfusion you stopped the bleeding and repaired the wound on his hand this is beneficence against beneficence you do not provide the treatment to the patient you refuse to help an accident victim you refuse to help a prisoner or a suspect of crime the next one is justice so there is no common agreement on what justice is so there is a term that is retributive justice which means an eye for an eye so there could be justice of mercy justice as harmony in the soul justice as equality justice as what is deserved and justice as justice as love 
practically justice is as fairness as what is deserved or let's say equality distributive justice all are required to bear an equal share of society's burden and benefits all patients have a right to your best diagnosis and treatment partiality should be avoided against justice is when you try to favor one patient over the other a vip patient comes and you treat that patient and you not treat the other patient senior and experienced doctors treat only private patients so this is against justice so when we talk about medical ethics medical ethics rests on four pillars that is uh, autonomy beneficence non maleficence and justice justice is an eye for an eye beneficence is do good non maleficence is do no harm and autonomy is respects the autonomy autonomity of the patient so with this i conclude my session on medical ethics and uh, when we talk about autonomy or we talk about justice or we talk about uh, beneficence or non maleficence these are these can be taken these would be uh, there as separate sessions and if there are any queries on this particular session i would be more than happy to answer them uh, thank you so much for your patient listening and have a good day ahead